right, welcome back to Korea for Americans. Nick here, and I am going to give you my recap of this third match. First of all, let me start off by saying congratulations to England for winning the third match. Huge bounce back from the second match where you could have easily had a draw, got the loss. India came back, got those quick wickets. And day four was very similar to that day five of the second match in that regard. Day uh, or match three... It's an interesting one. If you're an India fan, you, you just hated match three. You just want to forget about it. And you want to move on to match four. If you're an England fan, you have a lot to be excited about. And that's where I'm going to start off first with the positive. What good things, what amazing things happened for, for England in this match. First of all, they bounced back. They're in home. They're at home in England. They moved over to Leeds for this, uh, for this match here. And you had... Jimmy Anderson that had to go a third match in a row, and typically that's not his style. You brought in, brought in some guys to try to help out, took out Sibley, right? And they started off amazingly, right? They started off bowling amazingly. They brought in Hasib Hamid, who I think was there in the second match as well, but you had him at number two. You brought in Duad Milan. Big, big change right there, and especially in that first innings, he really helped set the tone. But you had guys like Robinson and Overton, who I believe were in the second match. I'm very confident in saying that. But once again, they showed that as much as I love Chris Wokes, right now you're not missing a Chris Wokes. You might be missing his bat because he's a batting all-rounder or a bowling all-rounder. He can bat really well as well. But in this match, you didn't miss his bat because, you know, Joe Root and company got yourself plenty of runs. So the bowling itself was just masterful, was just masterful. Just the deliveries and where they positioned that ball off of the off the pitch where they induced so many edges. They induced one, two, three, four, five, um, six that I can count from the first innings. Some of them are to other guys like Robinson. I don't know if that was an edge and to Rory Burns. I cannot remember. You induce six and then in the in the second innings for India, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more later on. You got yourself several more. KL Raul with that amazing catch to Bearstow. Root got an edge. Butler got an edge. Overton um, caught an edge. Butler caught an edge. Butler caught an edge. And Bearstow caught an edge from Staraj tail ender. So you're able to induce like what is that, 12 or 13 edges for your 20 wickets? They got all 20 wickets they needed. They finished in the fourth day. England showed everyone, especially the England fans who were like, oh no, we're dead in the water. Our garb our team is garbage. We have too many injuries. It's not fair. Then you watch this match and you're like, maybe it's okay that we have those injuries because these guys are performing. These guys are performing against the same India team that we feel embarrassed us with that defeat in the second match on our grounds at Lords. You got a lot to be excited about. You got Robinson with the Pfeiffer in this match. 26 overs, only 65 runs, two and a half runs per over. He did have five no balls. But, you know, he's, he's feeling his way. Anderson did give himself a wicket in, in the second innings. But it was really the first innings when he got his three wickets. That was really what made the difference there in that first innings. And then you had Overton playing a great supporting role. And Moline Ali. That's probably one of the few. If That's the only edge I saw on day four. Going against India, that I was not mad at the the bats before. That was an amazing. Well, was there another one? I uh, yeah, there was another one to Jadeja. I don't I don't fault Jadeja for that one, but that one to Shami, that man, that ball had so much spin on it. He completely fooled him out of his pads, and he, that would have fooled a lot of people. That was a beautiful ball for Moeen Ali for his one wicket in in that over. And he got himself zero wickets in the first innings. So one wicket, but it was a beautiful ball. But you had a contribution from, a huge contribution from Overton and Robinson to support um, Jimmy Anderson with Stuart Broad not being able to be there, Chris Wokes not able to be there, Sam Curran. He was able to get himself a few wickets in in that, I think like one over, right? See, like one over is where he was able to get his two wickets. But it was really Robinson, Overton, and Jimmy Anderson that were the huge difference here. You had England that didn't drop it anything, really. They didn't drop it anything. And then the batting. I mean, you've got to be so happy with England's batting. 
In their first innings, Rory Burns, 61. This is the order of their lineup. 68 from Hamid, 70 from Milan. Anything you can do, I can do better. Root, 121. Keep going up. The funny thing about Bearstow's 29 is I was talking to Gabe on the live stream saying, how much is Bearstow going to get? I think he's going to go for a lot. And he's like, oh, he won't get to 30. He was absolutely correct there. 61, 68, 71, 21. You're going to win a lot of matches with innings like that. That was super impressive. So if you're an England fan, you're feeling really good about it. You shouldn't feel 100% confident that we got this. This is our series. But history would show that you do have it to your series. But besides that, you feel like, all right, we're ready to go. We can beat anyone, including India, right now, the way we just came off, and they've got to move it forward. And that's the biggest thing. And it'd be really interesting in match four if they're able to bat first to see if they can keep that amazing first four going. And even if one of those or two of those guys in the first four don't get going, you still have Bert Butler and Bearstow, who is definitely, Butler's definitely more than due. Moen Ali can also rake a little bit. Sam Curran, maybe we'll have a sighting of him. Maybe we had much of a Sam Curran sighting in this series. So that's the good things about England. That's what you're excited about. For India, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Yesterday I did my day three recap. I said India owned day three. They did. They did a fantastic job of fighting back. Kohli, Pujara, Rohit Sharma. They all fought back and they scored beautifully 215 runs. They didn't get to 300 today. I was nervous about, and I even mentioned the new ball. You guys mentioned in the comment section. I was nervous about the new ball, but I was more than nervous about the rest and being out of that form. That's what I was most worried about. I said if Coley gets to 150 balls total because of that layoff he had, something like 94 yesterday, then that would be a good thing. And he got a total of 125. So he only saw 31 more balls. Coley goes out. The same exact way that he's always gone out the last several matches. The same exact way. And this time it was even more pronounced because he had at least at least that much distance, I want to say, from the the stump and his bat. So I, I don't know what he's defending. I don't know what he's doing. He's definitely not seen it. And he's always susceptible to that edge. But it wasn't just him. It wasn't just him. Besides the beautiful ball by Moline Ali. And besides Jadeja, Jadeja, that was a beautiful delivery. Who was that? By Overton. Beautiful delivery. That was just scaping right by the stumps, and his bat was right there. That was beautiful. But once again, Coley, Rahani, and Pont, they all went out the same exact way, the same Coley way that he's gone out recently, and it's frustrating. At least Coley got himself 55, saw 125. That's the promising thing. That and let me just interject with some positivity right now. The balls they saw, the fight they had back in the second innings, not today, but in day three, Rohit Sharma 156 balls, Pujar 189, Kohli 125. That was good to see, but we, we don't need moral victories right now. This is Team India. They have more than enough juice to be able to get past a team like England, even at in Leeds at Headingley. They can do it, but they weren't able to do it today. What I'm going to say is this was worse than day one. This was worse than day one, okay? It was because day one, 78 all out. They had two wickets against them. But today, total, for my math, 63 for eight. I'm calling that 63 all out because they needed to outlast today and they couldn't. Today was worse. And once those wickets started falling and they started early, that LBW against um, Pujar, I don't know what he was thinking. He was defending with his, his knee pad as opposed to defending with the bat. He's the king of defending. He just, I think it was a mental slip. I made, He was completely fooled by the ball. I have no idea what he was expecting, but that was a horrible way to start because I don't know how many balls he saw. I don't think it was too many balls before he went out. And as much encouragement as we, as Indian fans, I should say, got from day three, all that went out the window in day four. All of that went out the window. There was very little fight besides from Jadeja. I did like seeing him run up the track to get that six. That was beautiful. He was fighting. He was fighting. And then it was a beautiful ball by Overton. Um, and then once again, the tail end. The tail end is non-existent. It was a, a miracle what happened in the second match. A miracle what happened with Boomerah and Shami scoring runs. Shami getting that half century. That was a miracle. You're not going to see that too much. You can't bank on that too much. And as much as I love Saraj as a bowler, he wasn't really able to show up too much. He got himself two wickets. He gave a lot of runs, though. And as a batsman, he's just, I mean, you, you can't count on him whatsoever. England was in control. 
with the exception of day three, they were in control days one, two, and four. They manhandled India. If India didn't fight back in day three, this would have been one of the probably one of the ugliest losses between two top powers in international cricket. And it's very concerning. I do think they can easily bounce back. I do think Coley has a chance of getting a century in this series. I really do. I think he's close. He's just got to lay off. He was doing that great Sachin thing where he was defending, cover drive, defending, cover drive, all that kind of stuff. He's got to lay off, and he's got to get away from that kryptonite because England knows what he likes to go for, and they're going to keep giving him that. But this was an amazing bounce back from England. You cannot help but be impressed by that. I did think that they were going to win by wickets, not by innings. They won by innings, so congratulations to them. Gives them some points on the standings. India needs to really figure out what are we going to do to not be so susceptible to the edge because that is killing them right now. I'll take a run out. I'll take a can of corn sitter. I, I'll take anything but these edges. They're killing me because you're not getting a lot of bat on it. You're not able to see the bounce off the ball. I know it's so quick, but something's going on, and I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is, but it was just, for England, you're super excited. England almost saw more overs than India in both their innings. It was like off by like nine or so. That's crazy. England dominated. Congratulations to them. Let me know what your thoughts are from this match. I, I'm not too excited about it. it. It was good to see this match evened up. Match four is going to be very, very exciting. Not sure how our streaming schedule is going to be, but I'm going to try to do these recaps each day. So if I can't stream, definitely talk about, try to get Gabe on here when he's not working. He's got a very, very busy schedule in case you don't know why he's not here right now. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for all the support. And until next time, adios.